Today we're going to look at unit conversion. This is something that is surprisingly easy to mess up on the SAT. So we're going to look at it step by step with an example. Mia is running a race for charity. For every mile she runs, her sponsors have committed to pay 7 British pounds. At the end, she runs a total of 30 kilometers. How much money did she raise in US dollars? Okay, so this problem gives us a whole bunch of messy units. Whenever we see something like this, we want to start by looking for two things. What units are we starting with, and what units do we want to get to? So we're given two quantities in this equation, 30 kilometers and 7 pounds per mile. Let's focus on first converting 7 pounds per mile. So this is the rate at which we're making money, but the distance we're given is in kilometers, and the money we want to end up with is in US dollars. So we're starting with pounds per mile, and we want to end with US dollars per kilometer. So let's go ahead and do our unit conversion step by step. So as we said, we're starting off with 7 pounds per mile. We eventually want to end up with USD per kilometer. So the key to doing unit conversion like this is to view the units as variables themselves, like x or y. Now the key to why we do that is so we can see what ratios we need to multiply by. So in this case, we want to start by canceling out the GBP, the pounds. We see how we do that here by dividing by pounds. And then we know we eventually want to end up with USD, so we need to multiply in the top by USD. So that gives us the ratio to multiply by to convert the money units is USD per GBP. Now that we've dealt with the units, we just need to plug in the numbers from the problem statement. So we're given that 1.3 USD is 1 GBP, so we end up plugging in that 1.3 USD per GBP is the ratio we need to multiply by. Okay, great, we're halfway there. Okay, so we finished converting the units in money. Now, we need to convert the units of distance. We're starting with miles, we need to end up with kilometers. So we're gonna follow very much the same process. So first, we know we need to cancel the units that we already have, which is miles. So we multiply in the top by miles so that we get them to cancel just like they were if they were x, okay? And then we need to end up with kilometers, so we put by that in the denominator. So now we have our ratio as miles per kilometer. So we look back to our problem statement and just plug in the numbers like we did before. So plugging them in and evaluating, we get that our ratio is 0 0.625 miles per kilometer. And we plug that into the top, and we have finally our total expression that gives us USD per kilometer. And we see, looking at it in total, how the units we end up with match with the ones that remain in our expression on the left, USD in kilometer. So now that we've dealt with all the ratios, put it together, we can now just pull out the numbers and get to a final answer. So we see that done here, and we end up with our final answer is 5.69 USD per kilometer. Okay, so we found our final rate at which she raises money in USD per kilometer. So this is our final rate, but not quite our final answer per se. The final answer is how much money she raised. So the question is, at this rate, how much money did she raise by running 30 kilometers? Okay, so to get to our final answer now, we just need to take this rate at which she's raising money for charity in USD per kilometer and multiply by the distance she runs. So when we do that, plugging in 30 kilometers, we see how the units cancel as we want them to, and we just are left with USD. And we simply evaluate, and we see that at the end of the race, she has raised 170.7 USD. That's really all there is to it, but to make this a little clearer, we're going to look at one more example together. Racy is buying paint to paint her room a nice soothing yellow. She measures that the surface area she wants to paint is 10,000 square inches. The paint store tells her that for every 50 square feet of surface area that she wants to paint, she needs 2 liters of paint. So, how many liters is she going to need to buy? So for this problem, we again want to start with what are the starting units and then what are the ending units. So in this case, our starting units are inches squared for 10,000 inches squared, and the final units we want are feet squared. So how do we get from square inches to square feet? Well, you might be tempted to just say, let's multiply by feet per inch, and then we would get our inches to cancel and we end up with our feet on the right. However, it's not quite that simple because if we had inches squared over inch, we look at the exponents there, we would still end up with inches in the numerator. So what we need instead is to divide by inches squared, and then we properly cancel the inches squared. And we also end up with feet squared that we want on the right. So how do we find the ratio, the value of the ratio of feet squared per inches squared? Well, we can see that that's the same as foot per inch and then square that value. So 
we start by finding foot per inch is one foot per 12 inches. And we square that, and we end up with one over 144 feet squared per inches squared. We can take that final ratio, plug it back into our expression, and then plug in the numbers and evaluate that the area we're looking at, 10,000 square inches, is really the same as 69.4 square feet. So to finish up our problem, we can take this final area we have in feet squared and multiply it by two liters per 50 feet squared that the paint store told us and get the number of liters that we need in total. So we plug in these numbers, we see how our feet squared cancels like we want it to and we end up with just liters and our final answer is 2.8 liters. Putting it all together, you should be comfortable converting all kinds of units on the SAT. Practice these new methods, and in no time, you'll be an expert of unit conversion. Hope you liked the video. If you want to hear more and see what else we're up to, hit like and subscribe, and see a new video coming out from Point Avenue every week. If you want to talk to us, hear more about what we're doing, or have any questions, email us at contact at pointavenue.com. Bye!